Good day, good people. This is Phil and WebDev Hero. I'm here with a new tutorial in PHP and this one is going to be about abstract classes and interfaces and especially the difference between both of those. Now, if you do not know what an interface is, uh, please check out my video about this subject. And in this tutorial, we are going to talk about abstracts first, abstract classes, and then I will show you what the differences are. I will try to make this absolutely noob proof, all right? Because I have looked up several tutorials on YouTube and some of them weren't really understandable for newbies. So bear with me and let's get started. First of all, what is an abstract class? Well, an abstract class is a foundation for another class, just like an interface, okay? Some methods in abstract classes are already defined and must therefore be used. The purpose of this thing is to provide a kind of template to inherit from and to force the inheriting class to implement the abstract methods. You will see in a minute when we're going to start to code a little what this means. It's not as complicated as it may sound right now. Let's move on first. Um, an abstract class cannot be instantiated, so you cannot create an object from it immediately. It is only a pattern for a new class, okay? So abstract methods, they do not contain a body, just like with interfaces where you tell the user or the programmer that in his classes he should use a certain method. You do the same thing with abstract methods. They do not contain a body, but they have to be implemented and defined. Now, in abstract classes, you may also define regular methods, okay, that can be used. You will see this in a minute. And when you inherit from an abstract class, you must use the abstract methods. You cannot not use them, okay? So what is an interface? Just a little refresher here. An interface is like a contract. The guy writing the interface says, hey, I accept things looking that way. And the guy using it says, okay, my class will look that way. An interface is like an empty shell. The interface can do anything. It's just a pattern. And the abstract method, on uh, the abstract class, on the other hand, is not just an empty shell. It may have some methods and properties already defined. You can do that in an interface, okay? The difference, I like this definition here. An interface would be like the English language. So defining an interface defines how your code communicates with any object implementing that interface. On the other hand, an abstract class is like a partially built class. It is much like a document with blanks to fill in. It might be in English, but that is not as important as the fact that some of the document is already written. And I like this definition very much. So an interface is like the English language. So you can say, please write your class in English and an abstract class is like a document with blanks. So it might be in English, yes, but what's more important is that some parts of the document are already written. Okay? Let's get coding. Alrighty, so what we have here, I have not been here and wonder you, in case you wonder, and with the Darkula dark theme because initially it just has uh, light themes, but I don't like it. So dark theme it is, and let's go ahead and create something. So for example, let's make a class, an abstract class, food, okay? So this is the pattern for everything that follows. We have an abstract class, food, and in this we can already declare some, for example, protected properties. For example, protected taste. And we go ahead and the other one is name. Sorry, little typo here. 
And now we can go ahead and create a public function, a constructor. So this constructor takes a variable when you instantiate an op when you create an object from this class and this uh, constructor just takes the name and assigns the variable in this class to it. So this name equals name. All right, nothing special here. Only thing that you have to bear in mind is that this function is just a regular function with a body in it. It's not abstract. It doesn't have to be implemented, but it automatically is. You could redefine it when you create a new class that inherits from food. But this is just a regular public function like in any class. All right. And this is why it has a body. When you create functions that are abstract, what we are going to do now with the keyword abstract, so abstract function, sorry, abstract function, how could we call it? Where well, we could call it eat. And now this cannot have a body. All right, well, let's check it out if I get an error message here in NetBeans, if I give it a body, abstract method eat cannot contain body. Perfect. It's even enlarged this a little. So this is important for you to understand. So this is very interface like when you create abstract functions in abstract classes, you cannot give them a body. You're just telling the programmer that uses this class that extends it that it has to have this function in it. That's all it is. Same goes for uh, properties. So I could say that these are not just uh, protected. I could say that these are abstract and they have to be implemented. Okay. So abstract always means you have to use this. So we have the constructor, we have properties, we have one abstract function. Let's give it another one. That just gets the name. So public function gets the name and then it returns this name, the one we already declared with the constructor. All right. Okay. Now what can we do with this? Well, first of all, all right. Um, we can try to instantiate it and see if it throws us an error message. Now, like I told you, you cannot instantiate a class that is abstract. Okay. But we can go ahead and try it. For example, go ahead and say fill is a new food. doesn't make any sense, but it's just to show you. Okay, we already get a notification here. Create class food. Okay, we could create this class. Fatal error. Perfect. You cannot instantiate an abstract class. Well, that's loud and clear and very understandable. You cannot instantiate an abstract class. Just so you believe me, all right? <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and create something new. For example, a class apple that extends food. Here we go. And yeah, well, go away, please. Okay. Let's move ahead and, and extend this class with a new class apple. So bear in mind that this class obviously has both these um, public functions here, okay? Because it inherits it and it has to implement this one. If I leave this empty now, check out what happens if I create a new instance of this. Um, no, we want an apple. All right. Okay. Marker here is you can create this class. 
oh sorry and here we don't get an error message but it will not work because we have not yet created the abstract function but still let's check it out like so so we refer from our new object and we try to first of all we give it a string for the constructor and now we try to echo that out with the get name function or methods all right let's see if it works it does not work all right and even though we don't have the appropriate error message here it is because well it cannot keep working because we haven't defined this abstract function yet so what we have to do is we have to create a function eat and we can just uh, we can just return one anything okay or we, let's let's return a string yum which means it's good food and now when we refresh we still don't get a name now why is that we have a new apple with apple the public function construct name this name is name this works to and public function get name returns this name apple get name yeah so create method get name in class apple we do have that because we extend food oh okay it just returns it obviously we would have to echo it out in order to see it in the browser you see this is live debugging here we go okay now in case you wonder what happened here is when you return something which you should always do then it's not automatically echoed out because I just returned it and you get to choose what to do with it you could just echo it out here, but that's bad practice because you should always return stuff and let the programmer choose what to do with it and not force him to echo it out because then you can't work with it. Okay, and um, this is how you would create an abstract class. This is how you create a regular public function that you can use here. And remember, abstract methods and properties always have to be used in your inheriting class and let's check it check out again this different slide here because i think this is mostly helpful and repetition always helps you to learn so an interface is like the english language defining an interface defines how your code communicates with any object implementing that interface and on the other hand an abstract class is like a partially built class it is like a document with blanks to fill in. It might be in English, but that isn't as important as the fact that some of the document is already written. I hope I cleared that up for you. If you have any further questions, just put them in the comment and please support me with a subscription. I wish you a good day. See you in the next tutorial.